Growing up in America is a subject that has fascinated many of our writers. Sherwood Anderson used the trials and heartfelt passions of youth as a reflection of all of man's experience. His special talent was drawing small sketches that managed to suggest the whole of a person's life. He'd outline the character with a few broad strokes, then drop him into some awkward social predicament. His younger heroes often are torn by the yearning to escape the confinement of hometown thinking, much like the principal character of our next story, a teenager we've called Andy. The story is titled, I'm a Fool, and it was written in 1922. Andy has a summer job that most upstanding folk would find neither fitting nor respectable, but he means to lash out a bit against the routine. In Anderson's sketches, the outline of such daring is seldom easy or sweet. Here's how Andy begins the story. It was a hard jolt for me, one of the most bitterest I ever had to face. And it all came about through my own foolishness, too. Sounds like trouble. Andy himself tells us the whole story. You talk your way into this job. Mr. Jessup, you needed a fella to help you out. Didn't need no city boy. You don't know nothing about horses. I figure I know as much as a body's likely to know. And if there's more, I'll learn that too. Uh, if, if you'll teach me, Mr. Jessup. Don't go calling me Mr. Nothing. The name's Bert. Well, don't just stand there. Unhitch him so he can eat. And remember, I'm not your boss. Mr. Harry Whitehead is. Now, if these horses win a race now and then, we can stay working for Mr. Whitehead. Huh? Yes, sir. Don't serve me, boy. It's the horses you gotta respect. When it's raining, they come in first. If it's cold, they get the blankets. And when you're tired and hungry, they eat first and sleep first. Now, you think that's any kind of life for a man? Yes, sir. Well, we'll see, boy. <laughs> we'll see. Summer of 1919. I left my hometown of Canton, Ohio, 
left my mother and sister crying on the front porch, saying it was something awful. One of our family working as a swipe on the racehorse circuit, traveling with a colored man and all. I can't say I saw nothing wrong with it. And I feel sorry for the boys that go through life putting on airs and never get to know a man like Bert Jessup. From July until late November, Bert and me kept moving along to race meets and fairs all through Ohio. We'd get to a county seat town on a Saturday or Sunday, and the fair would begin the next Tuesday, and last until Friday afternoon. My horse was Dr. Fritz, and he'd be, say, in the 225 trot on Tuesday afternoon. And on Thursday afternoon, Bucephalus, Bert's charge, would show him a thing or two in the free-for-all pace. It left you a lot of time to hang around, and you'd find out about horses and men, and pick up a lot of stuff you could use all the rest of your life, if you had some sense and you salted it down. up Dr. Fritz and Bucephalus, and we were heading out to the races at Marietta, Ohio. We were driving slow and steady, so as not to overheat the horses, and Bert was singing his favorite song, Deep River. Nobody around today. When we finish this, I'm gonna show you how that big old horse can really run. Why they ever have to name a beautiful beast like you a crazy name like about Ben Ahem? I call him Big Ben. But he can go though. He sort of lays back in the early heat and then picks up sharp and Let's come down clean. <laughs> One day I'm going to drink all the wine I want. And I'm going to put on my best suit, cut the town wide open, and have 15 pretty women follow me up and down the street. <laughs> yeah. 
Gandhi, you've never been with a woman, have you? I mean, up to the hill. No, I suppose not. Doesn't show, does it? Well, uh, not unless you're looking real close. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with me? I wanted to go with a woman lots of times, but every time it's the same old thing. I can't get up the nerve. You just got to relax and be yourself. I sure have thought about going off to one of those houses. But I don't want something cheap and mean looking. Yeah, but you are, you are a princess. How'd you know that? <laughs> you might want it all alike. <laughs> I want her to be shy. Ooh, Tell me things she never told anybody else before. And I want to be the strong one. Ooh. And for her to be the timid, shrinking one. Oh, yeah, you know what I got to say to that? What? Good luck. all right by morning. He just got excited from the racing and all. Old Burke could have been the greatest. You know that, George. You old rascal. <laughs> oh, well. You could ten things without me today. I, I want to walk around, see this place. Might even buy myself a grandstand ticket and sit with all the dudes. Oh. Look for some women, that it? 
Do I look all right? Nope. Come here. You know what you need to look like a real swell? A derby. Brand new derby. <laughs> Tender, I'd like to hold have on. you. Just hold on. I'd like mine now, please, before the races begin. I'll have a whiskey and no water. young fella. May I trouble you for a light? Havana rum-soaked tip. It's the only kind of smoke. You agree? Much obliged, old chap. <laughs> Bartender, another whiskey. A double. <laughs> I'll have four 25-cent cigars, Havanas, rum-soaked tips.
15 seconds to post time. The horses are in position for the start of the first race. Go! I'm not being too forward, but thinking about placing another bet, you ought to take a look at a horse named About Ben Ahem. About Ben Ahem. Have you bet on him before? Well, it wouldn't be fair if I said right now, but I can tell you he's got a mark of 208, and he'll come in well under that. Are you sure? I'm positive. But don't bet a penny on his first heat, because he'll run it like a plow horse. After that, he'll skin him alive. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't miss it. My name's Henry West. This is my fiance, Miss Eleanor Woodbury, and my sister, Lucy West. How do you do? I'm... Walter L. Mathers, junior of Marietta, Ohio. My family has this place down on the Ohio River, a big old house, kind of stuffy for some taste, maybe, but we have the most beautiful stables you've ever seen. And Henry, would you like a cigar? Oh, thank you, Walter. Don't mind if I do. Sandusky, Mr. Mather. What brings me? Well, actually, you see, my father owns this horse, about Ben Ahim, which he lets out to a Mr. Bob French for racing purposes. You see, being Presbyterian, our family has never gone into racing in that way. In our own name, I mean. Well, my father thinks that this Bob French may not be on the square, so he sent me up to Sandusky on the fly. You mean you're a spy? How exciting. Isn't that exciting, Lucy? <laughs> Henry, um, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind placing this for me on about Ben Ahim for the third heat. I wouldn't want this Bob French fella to spot me checking on him. Whatever odds you can get. Uh, Henry, not until the third heat, Henry. Well, Henry, after what Mr. Mathers told us, that Eleanor and I'd be missing out on a golden opportunity if we didn't each put something in. That's right, Henry. We all want to be millionaires. Ten dollars enough?
Just as you said he would, Mr. Mathers. Oh, please call me Walt. Well, it's this next heat he'll come on sharp. Odds should be pretty good now. I'll add this to my vet, Henry. Fine, Walter. restaurant and then Wilbur said we'd rent a boat and visit the amusement park near Cedar Lake. She was from a town called Tiffin. It wasn't too far from Lake Erie. We about laughed and cried and looked at each other all serious and such till I knew I was falling in love about as hard as a body can and still keep breathing. A fella can tell when something's for real all right. And this was it. must be my lucky day. I could tell that as soon as I saw you in that grandstand. But this sure is a nice place. It reminds me of a fishing hole near home. I caught this big old catfish one time. He, he was about that. He... Would you like to know what I was thinking before? I was wishing that I didn't have to catch the train to Tiffin tonight. Yeah. Is it very far to Marietta, Walter? Marietta? To your farm in Tiffin. Marietta, yeah, right. I, I forgot I told you about our farm in uh, Marietta. Lucy, there's, there's something that I really, I really should try and tell you. Lucy, I, I wish that... Well, you see, I, I, I wish... Yes, Walter? I, I wish that... that today never had to end. Walter, are we going to see each other again? Yes. We could exchange addresses. Addresses? Sure, so we could write to each other and maybe you could visit me if you felt like it. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I'd like that. 
And I could visit you and Marietta on your farm? Lucy, time to go. Hate to catch the train now. Walter, was there something you wanted to say? Lucy. you first. As soon as I get home tonight, before I even unpack. Mr. Walter L. Mathers, Jr. Windy Acres Farm, Marietta, Ohio. And I can go to sleep and make sure I dream about you. All aboard! That's the kind of girl you see just once in your life. And if you don't make hay, then she's gone. She gives you a look from inside her somewhere, and it ain't no vamping. What it means is you want that girl to be your wife, and you want nice things around her, like flowers and swell clothes, and you want her to have your kids. And you want good music played, and no ragtime. I could have run after that train and made about Ben a him look like he was tied to a plow. Maybe she'd write me down at Marietta. And the letter would come back stamped on the front. There ain't any such guy. I bet if I wouldn't have drank all that whiskey or got mad at that dude with the fancy tie, I never would have gone and told such a lie. I wish that dude was here right now. I'd take his cane and I'd smash him one. Oh, no, no, Andy. You stop being so hard on yourself. All you did was to tell some little girl a lie. Not just any girl. All right, so you told the truth from the beginning. You were a swipe sleeping on a cot in a barn. <laughs> wouldn't have made no difference to her. Not to Lucy Weston. I could tell by the way she looked at me. A fella can tell those things. It don't take a whole lot of learning. I'm a fool. <laughs> 